what's up okay so I am hopefully gonna be uh, short and sweet or quick and salty whatever it is but I'm going to just continue to with the artist's way by Julia Cameron and uh, so I'm just gonna dive right in and this next section is titled recovering a sense of integrity okay uh, then she, and that sort of has like week four along with it but yeah I'm just gonna I'm sort of been going a bit rogue with this whole thing which is fine okay but anyway I'm just gonna read this uh, in any case this week may find you grappling with changing self-definition the essays tasks and exercises are designed to catapult you into productive introspection and integration of new self-awareness this may be both very difficult and extremely exciting for you warning do not skip the tool of reading deprivation i wonder what that means <clears throat> ah here we go the okay honest changes working with the morning pages we begin to sort through the differences between our real feelings which are often secret and our official feelings those on the record for public display official feelings often are often indicated by the phrase i feel okay about that the job loss her dating someone else etc what do you mean by i feel okay the morning pages forces us to get specific. Docs, I feel okay, mean I feel resigned, accepting, comfortable, detached, numb, tolerant, pleased, or satisfied. What does it mean? Okay, okay is a blanket word for most of us. It covers all sorts of squirmy feelings and it frequently signals a loss. That is very interesting. Well, we officially feel okay, but do we? At the root of a successful creative recovery is the commitment to puncture our denial, to stop saying it's okay when in fact it's something else. The morning pages press us to answer what else. In my years of watching people work with morning pages, I've noticed that many tend to neglect or abandon the pages whenever an unpleasant piece of clarity is about to emerge. If we are, for example, very, very angry but not admitting it, then we will be tempted to say we feel okay about that. And morning pages will not allow us to get away with this evasion, so we tend to avoid them. Okay, we've got a quote by William Baziotes. That's just the way I'm going to pronounce it. Each painting has its own way of evolving. When the painting is finished, the subject reveals itself. Okay. If we have the creeping feeling that our lover is not totally being honest with us, the morning pages are liable to bring us, bring this creepy possibility up, and with it the responsibility for an unsettling conversation. Rather than face this mess, we will mess up on doing the morning pages. By contrast, if we are suddenly and madly in love, the morning pages may seem threatening. We don't want to puncture the fragile and shiny bubble of our happiness. We want to stay lost in the sea of a blissful us rather than be reminded that there is an I in the we or an I in the we that is temporarily blinded. <laughs> that's good. I love that. Oh, that's that's linked to so many things right now. Oh man, okay, good. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I like that. In short, extreme emotions of any kind, the very thing that morning pages are superb for processing, are the usual triggers for avoiding the morning pages itself, <laughs> themselves. 
just as an athlete accustomed to running becomes irritable when he is or she is unable to get uh, miles in, so too those of us accustomed to now all the morning pages will notice an irritability when we let them slide. That's, uh, that's uh, telling me something. And uh, that just might be why I've been feeling a bit irritable. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps I should <laughs> try getting back to doing those morning pages, which are, by the way, um, each morning you write three full pages um, and you just write. And uh, it, I read about it in, um, before in previous chapters. But uh, yeah, and what I've done <laughs> sometimes uh, is to even take one page and section it into a quadrant, quadrants and then just fill three. And uh, then like there's the fourth space available, which I could basically do what I want to, draw a picture or whatever, leave it blank. But um, yeah, so that's that's also been interesting as an alternative to like four pages. And um, yeah, I've been actually writing them down with like pen and uh, and paper. And what I also found what can be helpful and less overwhelming is to select the size of paper or notebook that is um, not too intimidating uh, so yeah and so <laughs> I chose something small but not too small it's what is an A6 size notebook and um, yeah that's mostly been manageable except for the times that I avoided doing it which is interesting um, okay so getting back to this <laughs> we are tempted always to reverse cause and effect I was too crabby to write them instead of I didn't write them so I am crabby over any considerable period of time the morning pages perform spiritual chiropractic oh that makes me think of Luke Thompson by the way spiritual chiropractic whoa they realign our values if we are to the left or right of our personal truth, the pages will point out the need for a course adjustment. We will become aware of our drift and correct it, if only to hush the pages up. To thine own self be true, the pages say, while busily pointing that self out. It was in the pages that Mickey, a painter, first learned she wanted to write comedy. No wonder all her friends were writers, so was she. Chekhov advised, if you want to work on your art, work on your life. I, well, I'm very much picking up a paradox within that, which is, I love, I love that. Okay, cool. There's, that's another way of saying that in order to have self-expression, we must first have to self, have a self to express. That is the business of the morning pages. I myself feel this way and that way and this way. No one else need agree with me, but this is what I feel. In quotation marks. The process of identifying a self inevitably involves loss as well as gain. We discover our boundaries and those boundaries by definition separate us from our fellows. As we clarify our perceptions, we lose our misconceptions. Hmm. I think that's worth really, really giving it a go and testing that statement out. Re that's, that's strong. I like that. But I'm also curious as to, because I can't just think myself out of that I would like to unfold that little piece there okay as we eliminate ambiguity we lose illusion as well Ooh, this is getting poetic I like it poetic we arrive at clarity and clarity creates change oh, okay what a unique piece of uh, writing here 
Interesting, I like it. Piero Ferrucci. Eliminate something superfluous from your life. Break a habit. Do something that makes you feel insecure. Yes. <laughs> what I what a question that rises up in me, where is where's how do you know where to draw the line with that? <laughs> but maybe that's irrelevant. I have outgrown this job, may appear in the morning pages. At first it is a troubling perception. Over time it becomes a call for action and then an action plan. This marriage is not working out for me, the morning pages say, and then I wonder about couples therapy, and then I wonder if I'm not just bored with me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In addition to posing problems, the pages may also pose solutions. I am bored with me. It would be fun to learn French. Or I noticed a sign just down the block for a clay and fiber class. That sounds interesting. As we notice which friends bore us, which situations leave us stifled, we of are often rocked by waves of sorrow. We may want our illusions back. We want to pretend the friendship works. We don't, wanna, we don't want the trauma of searching for another job. Okay. Faced with the impending change, change we have set in motion through our own hand, we want to mutiny, curl up in a ball, ball our eyes out. No pain, no gain, the nasty slogan has it. And we resent this pain no matter what gain it is bringing us. I don't want to raise my consciousness, we wail. I don't think I've ever... That's not ever crossed my mind. <laughs> Interesting. I want dot dot dot. And thanks to the morning pages, we learn what we want and ultimately become willing to make the changes needed to get it, but not without a tantrum, and not without a kriya, a Sanskrit word meaning a spiritual emergency or surrender. I like that <laughs> spiritual emergency or surrender. Uh, find a way to like for me two things crop up in my mind SOS and then also some kind of Morse code be interesting to link it to that yeah because <laughs> I don't think that's wrong to say it's really important so uh, if you need to think of it as an emergency to help get you to take action especially so that it, there aren't like ripples of destruction to of, of your own making that uh, surprise you um, as you move forward then yeah it sounds good anyway let's move on uh, I always think of Kriyas as spiritual seizures okay <coughs> Perhaps they should be spelled cryas because they are cries of the soul as it is rung through changes. Okay, I think she maybe elaborates a bit too much. <laughs> but, uh, okay, cool. We all know what a cryer looks like. It is a bad case of a flu right after you've broken up with your lover. Lover? Okay, but this book was um, written in the 70s, I think. Okay, <clears throat> it's the rotten head cold and the bronchial cough that announces you have used your health to meet an unreachable work deadline. <laughs> the asthma attack out of nowhere when you've just done a round of caretaking your sick sibling. That's a cryer too. And the way she um, writes this is K-R-I-Y-A. So I'm not sure if... I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I thought I'd just spell it out in case um, I'm causing confusion. I do not want to do that. A quote by Zen Paradigm. I don't know if that's a magazine or... Okay. Stop thinking and talking about it, and there is nothing you will not be able to know. Hmm don't feel like that's very strong, but <laughs> it's okay. Always significant, frequently psychosomatic. Kriyas are the final insult to our psyche that adds to our injuries. Get it? A Kriya asks you. 
get it. You can't stay with this abusive lover. You can't work at a job that demands 80 hours a week. You can't rescue a brother who needs to save himself. So I'm taking it that the Kriya what the, that she's referring to, but I'm not sure. So, so maybe I should just hold off on. I'm just continue to read. In 12 step groups, if, if Chad were ever to listen to all this, <laughs> he could um, uh, perhaps um, offer his uh, expertise and wisdom here, and maybe correction. Uh, but anyway, uh, in 12 step groups, Kriyas are often called surrenders. People are told to just let go, and they would if they knew what they were holding on to. With the morning pages in place, the artist dates in motion. The radio set stands half a chance of picking up the message if you are sending and or receiving. The pages round up the usual suspects. They mention the small hurts we prefer to ignore, a lot, the large successes we fail to acknowledge. In short, the morning pages points the way to reality. This is how you're feeling. What do you make of that? And what we make of that is often art. People, people frequently believe the creative life is grounded in fantasy. The more difficult truth is that creativity is grounded in reality. In the particular, the focus, the well observed or specifically imagined. As we lose our vagueness about ourselves, our values, our life situation, we become available to the moment. It is there, in the particular, that we contact the creative self. Until we experience the freedom of solitude, we cannot connect authentically. We may be enmeshed, but we are not encountered. Art lies in the moment of encounter. We meet, the tr we meet our truth and we meet ourselves. We meet ourselves and we meet our self-expression. We become original because we become something specific, an origin from which work flows. As we gain or regain our creative identity, we lose the false self we were sustaining. The loss of this false self can, be, can feel traumatic. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't recognize me. <coughs> In quotation marks. Sorry about that. Remember that the more you feel yourself to be a terra incognita, the more certain you can be that the recovery process is working. You are on your own promised land, your own new frontier. Shifts in taste and perception frequently accompany shifts in identity. One of the clearest signals that something healthy is afoot is the impulse to weed out, sort through and discard old clothes, papers and belongings, weeds in the garden. Uh, I don't need this anymore, as we say, uh, we say as we toss low self-worth, so low self-worth shirt into gi the giveaway pile. Uh, I feel like there's a word missing there. Right? I'm sick of this broken down dresser and it's 16 coats of paint as the dresser goes off to Goodwill. Uh, okay, and then <laughs> suddenly a quote by MC Richards. All the arts we practice are apprenticeship. The big art is our life. A quote by Seneca. It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult. That's lovely. By tossing out the old and unworkable, we make way for the new and suitable. A closet stuffed with ratty old clothes does not invite new ones. A house overflowing with odds and ends and tidbits you've held onto for some day has no place for the things that you might truly enhance today. When the search and discard impulse seizes you, two, two cross currents are at work. That's very interesting. Two cross currents. The old you is leaving and grieving, while the new you celebrates and grows strong. As with any rupture, there is both tension and relief. Long-seated depression breaks up like an ice floe. Long frozen feelings thaw, melt, cascade, flood, and often overrun their container. You. 
You may find yourself feeling volatile and changeable. You are. Be prepared for bursts of tears and of laughter. A certain giddiness may accompany certain sudden stabs of loss. Think of yourself as an accident victim walking away from the crash. Your old life has crashed and burned. Your new life ha isn't apparent yet. Is, uh, isn't apparent yet. You may feel yourself to be temporarily without a vehicle. Just keep walking. If this description sounds dramatic, it is only to prepare you for possible emotional pyrotechnics. <laughs> I love these words. Chiropractic pyrotechnic. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting. Like it, like it, like it. Uh, you may not have them. Your changes may be more like cloud movements from overcast to plot, partly cloudy. It is important to know that no matter which form your growth takes, there is another kind of change, slower and more subtle, accumulating daily, whether you sense its presence or not. Nothing dramatic is happening to me. I don't think the process is working. I've often been told by someone who, from my perspective, is changing at the speed of light. The analogy that I use is that once we engage in the process of morning pages and artist states, we begin to move at such a velocity that we do not even realize the pace. Just as travelers on a jet are seldom aware of their speed unless they hit a patch of turbulence, so too travelers on the artist's way are seldom aware of the speed of their growth. This is a form of denial that can tempt us to abort the recovery process that isn't happening to us. Oh, yes it is. Quote by Giorgio di Girico. To become truly immortal, a work of art must escape all human limits. Logic and common sense will only interfere. But once these barriers are broken, it will enter the realms of childhood visions and dreams. This is quite a long <laughs> chapter. <laughs> okay. When we have engaged the Creator within to heal us, many changes and shifts in our attitudes begin to occur. I enumerate some of them here because many of these will not, feel, will not be recognizable as, at first as healing. In fact, they may seem crazy and even destructive. At best, they will seem eccentric. There will be a change in energy patterns. Your, dream will, your dreams will become stronger and clearer, both by night and by day. You will find yourself remembering your nighttime dreams, and by day, daydreams will catch up, catch your attention. Sorry. Interesting slip there. Freudian slip there. Uh, fantasy of a benign and unexpected sort will begin to crop up. I see how I got that mixed up there. Hmm. Many areas of your life that previously seemed to fit will stop fitting. Half your wardrobe may look, may start to look funny. You may decide to reupholster a couch or just toss it out. Musical bends may alter. There may even be bursts of spontaneous singing, dancing, running. You may find your candor unsettling. I don't like that. Is this <laughs> is this the sentence that will leave your mouth? I hope not. Or, I think that's great. In short, your tastes and judgments and personal identity will begin to show through. Well, what you have been doing is wiping the mirror. That is strong. I like it. We'll just take that out by itself there. And use that analogy. Oh, I just find that is very nice. But maybe not nice, but I just I like that. It's a piece that fits into my mosaic vision. Uh, so I shouldn't say my mosaic vision a mosaic vision that I'm trying to work on that um, thank you <laughs> each day's morning pages take a swipe at the blur you have kept between you and your real self as your image becomes clearer it may surprise you you may discover very Particular likes and dislikes you haven't acknowledged. A fondness for cactuses. So why do I have to, these pots of ivy? A dislike for brown. So why do I keep wearing that sweater? I never feel right in it. In. Conditioned as we are to accept other people's definitions of us. This emerging individuality can seem to us like self will run riot. Riot. It is not. Uh, the snowflake pattern, I like that, 
the snowflake pattern of your soul is emerging. That's stunning. Mm, that's beautiful. Yo. I don't feel like I can just stop right there. That's yo. That true that it's something that I really needed to read. Oh yeah. It resonates. Wow. Praise the Lord. Sure. And like just all of a sudden I feel like <sighs> attention is just gone. It's like there it is. Wow. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is so good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I accept that. I accept this relief right now. Oh, bring it in, that peace. <laughs> Each of us is a unique creative individual. But we often blur that uniqueness with sugar, alcohol, drugs, overwork, underplay, bad relations, toxic uh, things, under exercise, over TV, under sleep, many and varied forms of junk food for the soul. The pages help us to see these smears on our consciousness. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. I can take it or leave that, but that's uh, interesting. And I also want to sort of add more to that, sort of throw in, if I were to throw in little like uh, tags to just incorporate however you would want to, <laughs> this might be weird, but I'm going to say um, an igloo, Eskimo, and uh, <laughs> An igloo Eskimo and a geometric uh, dome greenhouse as well as swimming in a in in a spring we, after in between hikes and they're super cold you can you can often jump off like it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a cliff but you can jump off a rock into these springs and yo that's because for me that is like you are like awakened underwater you come up and it's like it's cold and it's jolting but you're exuberated refreshed and as you come out of that uh, you you are you just know to instantly find a place that has any form of like warm sunlight so that you can just just uh, you know try and um, uh, sort of absorb some of that as quick as possible and that feeling is so lovely and uh, I think I've just uh, happened upon something that I could be open to doing. I'm not sure when, but I could be open to doing it. It's okay. I've done it before, but uh, well, I'll, I can see that as a challenge. Should an opportunity come, I would be willing to consider it. And um, I think that it would be interesting as to if that happens to actually be to see what that feels like <laughs> you will have noticed an increase sometimes disconcerting sense of personal energy some bursts of anger some flashpoints of clarity people and objects may have taken on different meanings to you there will be a sense of the flow of life that you are brought into new vistas as you surrender to moving with the flow of God. There we go. Took her quite a while to get to. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. But uh, 
I like that because it's, in a way she's being very gentle and considerate to anyone who might be reading this. So I, I think that's very nice. I think that's kind. Um, uh, and then she says, this is clear already. You may well be experiencing a sense of both bafflement and faith. You are no longer stuck, but you cannot tell where you are going. You may feel that this can't keep up. You may long for the time where there was no sense of possibility, when you felt more victimized, when you didn't realize how many small things you could do to improve your own life. It is normal to yearn for some rest when you are moving so rapidly. What you will learn to do is rest in motion, like lying down in a boat. Jesus! Sorry. Jesus, I'm just thinking of Jesus in the boat and the disciples. Uh, I'm just visualizing it. A couple of weeks ago, we, okay, sorry. I'll just, I can't wait to finish this up because I'd like to just um, move with the speed of uh, whatever the case may be <laughs> to like the, the sappy spaces. Um, yeah. Want to spend, I just want to kind of just spend some time with God to be honest. <laughs> I think uh, I'm realizing how much I need to do that today. I don't think I've, I've done that enough. Or perhaps, well, what's enough? <laughs> it's like the more and more it's, it's nice. And to want to spend time in His presence is super just amazing it's exciting because <laughs> what comes out of that it gets sort of yeah it's better than um it's well it's a gift in itself let's put it like that <laughs> it's a re it's yeah it's it's nice um because sometimes the flesh or you know it might be fighting you yeah, <laughs> and you might feel reluctant to do and obligated and like uh, you know, almost giving into the limitations of your mind, but yeah, it's just it's good to do anyway. Uh, but I, I know I'm being vague, and so it's, I'll just move on. It is difficult for us to realize that this process of going inside and writing pages can open an inner door through which our Creator helps and guides us. Our willingness swings this inner door open. The morning pages symbolize our willingness to speak to and hear God. They lead us into many other changes that also come from God and lead us to God. This is the hand of God moving through your hand as you write. Woo! Yo! My goodness me! Yo! Incredible! And she says, it is very powerful. Mm. One technique that can be very reassuring at this point is to use your morning pages, or a part of them, for written affirmation of your progress. Put it in writing, we often say, when making a deal. A <laughs> uh, quote by W. H. Auden. The center that I cannot find is known to my unconscious mind. More phrases to rhyme and rhyme. Hear the chimes of the... Blam, blam, blam. <laughs> Sanaya Roman, a quote from that person. All you need to do is receive... It. All you need to do to receive guidance is to ask for it and then listen. There is a special power in writing out the deal we are making with our Creator. I receive your good willingly, and thy will be done are two short affirmations that, when written in the morning, remind us to be open and to increase good during the day. I trust my perceptions this is a powerful affirmation to use as we undergo shifts in identity. A stronger and clearer me is emerging another choose affirmations according to your need as you excavate your buried dreams you need the assurance that such explorations are permissible i recover and enjoy my identity those are just you know examples that i'm reading off her page there and 
couple of things come up in my mind well now very strongly but I feel the need not to uh, say those on top of what she's laid out there <laughs> to just try and be delicate just feel like it's important okay uh, I think we're rounding up here she's giving uh, an exercise called buried dreams as recovering creatives we often have to excavate our own pasts for the shards of buried dreams and delights this is making me think of pick, like finding the little beautiful pieces of mosaic of like cups or mirror or like tile or whatever that can be used to put together uh, a mosaic, uh, a picture, a puzzle, uh, and um, and that reminds me again and again. It's like so many things are just reminding me of my mom, which is interesting because it's like yes, of course, it's my mom, but not just her but I suppose parts of her that are perhaps also parts of me and definitely I think if I just ignore me and I think well could I recognize the parts in a way maybe I can't articulate it, in some other people and I, I think that yes yeah, some of them I, I can I think of that it's uh, things that I admire which I find interesting because it's like oh okay that feels uh, I uh, strong enough for me to feel like just a type of um, not thought not figuring I'm more of a gut and instinctual feel that just it kind of feels right it, it has a draw to it um, and that now brings me to to drawing near to God and how <laughs> and the the pen and the pencil and I'm thinking of Matthew um, and uh, sorry Matthew as in um, one of the disciples and uh, I really love that in the Bible that chapter and uh, yeah okay so <laughs> and it's amazing it's really amazing and I'm gonna continue like um, doing this or trying to do it with as many people as I can uh, I don't think I exactly need to share this but <laughs> uh, but it's not a secret I'll just maybe encourage something else it's like yeah if you okay I'll keep it I'll keep it, I'll keep it. But if you okay can't help it if you feel the need to draw or if you have a barrier that's cropping up that uh, is